Hey everyone out there, it's time for another Ask a Motor Cop. Officer Shane Spielman here, Anaheim Police Department. And today, I'm out in the field at Nutwood and Orange with our traffic engineer, our principal traffic engineer, Raphael Kobian. Raphael, thanks for coming. Great to be back on. Appreciate it. And today we're gonna to talk about speed. Speeding, speed limits, how all that works in the grand gamut of things. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is what is speeding? So speeding is basically going faster then it's prudent for a particular roadway based on the conditions. So, out here at Nutwood and Orange, should we be traveling at 50 miles an hour? I don't think so, the posted speed limit's 30. We've got a lot of houses, houses with driveways, direct residential access, parked cars, pedestrians. We got a school right around the corner. So again, speeding is going faster than is prudent based on the conditions. So with that, Raphael, how do we determine speed limits? Should we just pick one right out of a hat? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right, well, I just happen to have a hat here. I got here one of our Anaheim Police Department bicycle safety helmets. And I'm gonna mix up these speed limits. And uh, right now, Rafaela and I, we're gonna, we're gonna willy-nilly, we're gonna change the speed limit of orange right now. So, Rafael, go ahead and pick a number out of there. See, what, what do you think for orange? What are we gonna determine it is? Ooh, 40 miles an hour right. on orange. We're changing it to 40 miles an hour. Got it. Okay, well. Raphael, do we really do it that way? That's not how we do it. That's not how we do it. Raphael, go ahead and tell the folks out there how we actually do it. And this is where traffic engineering comes into play. The state of California actually tells us how speed limits should be established, not only in Anaheim, but throughout the entire state of California. And really, the reason that's done is, one, we want to make sure as motorists, we have the same expectation as we're driving in Anaheim next door in Buena Park or even up in San Francisco right so we expect what we're gonna be uh, what we're gonna encounter when we're driving through different roadways uh, and two we want to make sure that we're establishing it speed limits at speeds that are safe and speeds that still allow cars to travel through our roadways so the way that speed limits are established here in the state of California is the first thing we do is go out and collect actual data of motorists driving through the through this particular roadway and what we, what we do is we calculate what speed 85% of the people driving on a roadway are traveling at or below. And really what 80, what the speed that 85% of the people are traveling at is probably the speed that most people think is safe. Sure, absolutely. Based on all these different conditions that you mentioned earlier, right? A speed that most people would be comfortable driving at. So in general, that's where we start when we uh, look at establishing speed limits here in the city of Anaheim and in fact throughout the entire state. Absolutely, so just like traffic engineering relies on us to go out and enforce, we rely on traffic engineering to help us out. So that brings me to another thing. We like to call it in traffic, it's called the three E's. Education, enforcement, and engineering. Enforcement, going out and writing tickets. Education, what we're doing today, we're making a video about it. And then obviously, Raphael, the engineering part. So we work together to make sure that the roadways are safe in the city of Anaheim. So not only do we enforce the traffic laws on the police side, but we use traffic engineering to change things, whether it be signage, roadway, multiple tools that they have in their toolbox, and we, we rely on them to help us out to, to make stuff safe. So you can't be out there all the time, Officer Spielman. Absolutely not. So there's a couple of things that we use here in the city of Anaheim, a couple of tools that we use to help curtail speeding. One of them that we use on the police side is obviously enforcement. We have officers out there on motorcycles doing traffic enforcement. We also have officers out there in cars doing traffic enforcement. We try and be visible to curtail any bad behavior which could be dangerous. But another cool tool that we have is it's actually a portable radar sign. And you've probably seen these throughout the city. Um, the police department actually has several of them that we can put up in areas where we get complaints about speed. And what's really neat about these signs is not only does it flash your speed to give you a friendly reminder, hey, you know, you're going a little too fast, but it also records the data. And we also look at that data. So it records time of day, day, how many cars travel down the street, and obviously their speeds. So we can actually determine on a particular roadway what time of day and what day of the week speeding occurs the most. And we use that data for enforcement. Raphael, we got a couple of other tools in the city of Anaheim. What do we do? So we understand he can't be out here all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. So what yeah. can be out here all the time is stuff that engineering builds. So we've got what's called the Neighborhood Traffic Management yes. Program. And as the name implies, it's a program to manage traffic in neighborhoods. And within that program, we've got a lot of tools at our disposal to try to address traffic concerns. Absolutely. First thing we can do is remind motorists what the speed limit is, so I can toss up a speed limit sign. Yep. I can even stamp it on the ground to remind motorists. That's how fast. the most simple way. Yeah, relatively easy ways. 
Uh, next, we can go to some striping. We can add some additional stripes on the roadway to try to encourage people and get people to slow down. Or, some of you have may have experienced this in, in our streets here in Anaheim, we could also install speed lumps on our streets. And those are actual physical measures where you're gonna drive over them, you're not gonna be very comfortable going over it too fast. Right. So we implement these because these measures are out there 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. Absolutely. And I get this question a lot, so I wanted to touch on this. It's actually a tool that Raphael uses. But I get asked the question, a lot of people ask, Officer Spielman, what are these white fog lines that the city puts out on small roadways? Well, you've probably seen them. They're a white line that's offset from the curb about eight feet or so. And people think it's either for, for, for parking or, or, or for fog, but we don't get that much fog in the city of Anaheim. That line is actually a traffic calming line. And what that does is it gives an optical illusion to make it seem that the roadway is actually narrower than it actually is to get people to slow down. So for those of you out there wondering what that white line is along the curb, that's what it's for. Trying to get in that motorist head. Absolutely, and that's, and that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to educate folks, please slow it down, please travel at a safe speed. Obviously we have posted speed limits. Don't go too far over the posted speed, speed limit. We wanna keep it safe. And another thing too is the faster you go, the longer it takes for you to perceive a hazard and to react to that hazard and to stop for that hazard. So please travel at a safe speed. And uh, I happened to hear a motor pull up. Didn't you, Raphael? Don't we have a... I a, think so. I thought I heard a motorcycle in the area. Yeah, let's go... Oh, there he is. Let's go see, let's go see what he's doing. Yeah. Sergeant Boyer, is that you? Shane! I didn't know you guys were out here doing ask. Are you doing ask the motor cop? Uh, yeah. I had no idea. Uh, I'm just sure. a would-be traffic sergeant out here working a little radar. Mm -hmm. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. So what are you guys covering today? Well, as a matter of fact, we're covering speed and speed enforcement. Get right out of town. How fortunate that I was working radar out here. How fortunate. But uh, there's also one thing. Since you have your radar gun out here, Sergeant yes. Boyer, I wanted to cover one thing. A lot of folks don't realize that when we work speed enforcement, we're using this as a tool. We're not willy-nilly putting the radio signal out to try and catch a speeder. What we're doing is we're using this to confirm what we already know. What we really rely on is speed estimation. So say we're out here on Nutwood, the speed limit's 30, and I just happen to look to my left and I see a car coming at about 50 miles an hour. All I do is I use that radar to confirm, yeah, that car is traveling at about 50 miles an hour. So this is a tool I use to confirm it. Well, thank you, Officer Sergeant Boyer. Excuse me, didn't mean to call you officer. It, it, it just shows the amount of respect I demand in this detail. Absolutely. <laughs> so folks, just remember, slow down, keep a safe distance between you and cars in front of you, pay attention to speed limits. And another thing, when you, if you do get pulled over for speeding, you've got two warnings already. One is the speed limit sign, number two is the speedometer on your vehicle. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. We'll see you next time.